scotch, bourbon and fried. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Trenny and C. I'm Trenny. This is C. Why don't you introduce yourself? Last time I tried to. I want to you to introduce yourself. I said I was like <laughs> Davin De Caragamo or I, De Cargamo. Okay. De Cargamo. Well <laughs> Davin De Cargamo. Ah. Okay, yeah. And yeah. you're uh, A B C. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're I'm further in the alphabet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you for coming here to the Trending Sea Bunker to spend some time with us to talk a little bit about Canadian whiskey and more specifically uh, the Canadian Whiskey Awards, right? Yes. Got a few of the gold medals with us here today you brought. We didn't Lovely. win anything. No. We didn't win anything this year. We're not even runners up for anything. <laughs> we have our own um, illegitimate award ceremony, but we'll talk about the, that. The Trending Sea Awards are growing. <laughs> Each year. Um, so... We were hoping that today you could just kind of talk to everybody and explain kind of how you got the Canadian Whiskey Awards going and how winners are determined. Okay, well, it's... And a, judges. And judges. judges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit of a long story, but back in, I think, 1998, I got together with a group of people right around the world, and from India, Taiwan, over uh, Netherlands. We formed a group called the Malt maniacs yeah. and we were kind of uh, disgusted with the way uh, right. medals were being handed out for various whiskeys and we formed our own awards okay. and what happens is we had a judge uh, show that bottles a number of, <laughs> yeah this is the uh, Sheringham's distillery Vancouver Island Williams white right grain now. spirit oh boy yeah. spirit from grain yeah. anyway so we uh, we uh, Formed, founded our own awards where they're completely uh, judged blind. Samples sent around the world to all the different uh, members of the Malt Maniacs and it turned out that it was really, really uh, quite a prestigious uh, win mm. for people who won that. And mm. uh, So anyways, that went on, became quite uh, quite the, the awards ceremony, or quite the awards process. And it was very different than everything that was going on. You didn't have to buy advertising, you know, it was just all done to support the spirit because we were really keen on that. Mm -hmm. And so when I started uh, uh, writing about Canadian whiskey, I was looking at the same thing and, you know, sometimes Canadian whiskeys would win awards and the comments that, you'd, that were, you would get were just insane. You mm -hmm. could tell these people didn't have a clue about Canadian whiskey. Maybe they right. hadn't even tasted them, who knows? <laughs> yeah. But um, so then I, uh, you know, I decided, you know, we need to have our own Canadian whiskey awards. And I had launched CanadianWhiskey.org, my website. And um, I thought, well, you know, why don't I just try doing this myself? Mm -hmm. And so I uh, <clears throat> tasted all the whiskeys that I tasted that year and went through and came up with some, some that excelled in different uh, categories mm -hmm. and it published a page and it, it really... Uh, so it was really like just a blog to uh, start kind well, of this thing? Well, this was before the days of blogs. It was really more a website. Okay. See, what I was going to say is it's kind of interesting that you mentioned this is 10 years old now. Yeah. That it's only been 10 years. You would think like the Canadian Whiskey Awards should have been going on for a number of years already. By Decades, now. right? Yeah, right? Like it's, so why is it all of a sudden well, picking up a steam? Well, I think there are a couple of things. Canadians don't pat themselves on the back. Yeah, that's you know, true. And, uh, you know, so they entered the awards in America and awards in Great Britain and they kind of get... Every now and then, one of them wins something, and yeah. it's, you know, it's like the gambling psychology. Every now and then, you win just enough to keep entering. And, uh, right. Yeah. And most yeah, yeah. most of the awards uh, are put together specifically to make money. Mm -hmm. you, know, you pay big entry fees, and the, um, you know, and there's a profit in it. And of course, this the is this is totally the advertising of yeah, and, after, after, and, and yeah. then they sell you stickers that you can put right. in your bottles. I tell people they can go ahead if you want stickers, go ahead and get a mate. It's free. I, they get free uh, 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 like use electronic logo, graphics and things like that, so they can use it. You know, cool. Because it's all it's done uh, as an on, on a non-profit basis. So I select uh, ten uh, people across Canada to um, serve as judges. And what I've been doing is I watch people's comments about um, whiskey in general. They don't have to agree with me, but they have to make intelligent analyses people okay. who are just so we're out. out we're out then. <laughs> so okay, we're out okay. oh, oh yeah you guys well, yeah, you guys were ruled out long ago but, uh, uh, 
Yeah. In fact, maybe, would you, maybe I should sit on the outside so I can get out of here. Yeah, that's <laughs> a good idea. Well, well, no, this is like a bit of a trap. Yeah, we're we're right. actually going to get you on video <laughs> to finished, commit to something before when, you're allowed to leave. When I'm finished, when, okay, I, I commit that you will never be part <laughs> yeah. of the awards. Okay, shake on it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Perfect. Yeah. We're done. We're done. No, I, what I do is I watch people making comments about whiskey, mostly writers, but you know, bloggers and things like that. And uh, then I try to select people right across the country, so you know, some in each province, so mm -hmm. that we can get. Now, right this year, it's a little bit heavy on Ontario, and uh, we have two in Quebec, but it, I'm, I'm spreading it out. It's like there. elections, more, kind of. Very <laughs> yeah. heavy in those two well, so, like, you know, well, it, you know, different different areas have different palettes. I mean, the palette mm -hmm. in, in Saskatchewan and Alberta, man, it's nothing like in Ontario. Really and I want to have it representative of the country. Right. Um, yeah, an American palette. For Canadian whiskey is entirely different. In fact, there are lots of, Amer of Canadian whiskeys that are released in the States that are not released in Canada and probably wouldn't be that too well accepted in right. Canada, but are yeah. huge mm -hmm. down there. So, so you, you know, then everybody gets blind samples, totally blind, and my wife pours them, so I don't know what's in the bottle either. Oh, that's and awesome. they send them out, and uh, then they send in their numbers. We do a little bit of statistical analysis, or if somebody's just given random numbers, these stats ident would identify that quickly. Right. Uh, we did have that problem once in the very oh. beginning, but not since. And this year, the judges were, were really wonderful. And then we just added up, and it's, and it's, it's the numbers. With, okay. with 10 judges, no individual judge can have uh, a lot of influence. Right. So, so you know, and it, and then the, I send the spreadsheet back up with all, everybody's scores on it, so everybody sees can see everybody's that. scores, mm -hmm. and they can see their own scores, so they can, you know, they can um, uh, sort of validate that. They, so, yeah, well, wow, I was, say, I was way so off on them. <laughs> do you typically have like people picking the same ones or scoring them? The judging is. is Fairly consistent. Yeah. Yes. Not a lot of outliers. Then. Uh, no, but we, we do it. We run a stats pack that tells finds the outliers. We had, I think, twenty four outliers this year mm. in probably. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Twenty five hundred scores or something. Oh, maybe, maybe less. Maybe fewer than that. But anyways, it was really yeah. it's really low. It's so low that there's no judge that stands out as hmm. being how, off the wall. How many whiskeys are each judge given? Each judge is given all of them, and because we only reveal the names of the winners, mm -hmm. we don't ever disclose how many in total are submitted because oh, then people reverse engineer and say, yeah, oh, right, right, I right. bet you so and so entered and they didn't win." Right. So, right. so, so yeah. we just don't. Uh, we just don't do that. How many categories do you have uh, of award? Well, that changed this year. Okay. Okay. In the past, we had two categories: oh. whiskey and flavored whiskey. This year, okay. we added subcategories for uh, different grains, like corn, best corn whiskey, best oh. uh, best uh, wheat whiskey, best hundred percent rye. We also did cask strength. And oh, since yeah. some people are making whiskey in the same way the Americans do with a mash bill, we also had that best mixed mash bill. Right. So, yeah, yeah. so we increased the number this year, and I'm telling you, that became quite a a lot more work than mm -hmm. you might think yeah, I guess. when it comes to sorting them out. I'll bet. Well, I was kind of thinking, like, with this whiskey here from, uh, what's this distillery called again? Mac Macaloni. Macal I can never say it. I'm terrible at pronouncing things apparently, but being this is a Kuila and Bunhaben blend, but that's it's not eligible. It's not eligible okay. at all. That's what I was kind of wondering. That's, that, that's just you know whiskey that they've bought. Yeah, it's just like it's like an independent bottle. Yeah, it's yeah, no, that, that's not okay. eligible. We also have a category for whiskey spirit. And we kind of got tricked into doing that when Alan Winchester submitted oh. a bottle of ancient grains. It wasn't really whiskey, but he didn't say it's not whiskey. He just didn't say it was. Yeah. And the damn thing won. It was a delicious. Silver metal. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. really? Alan, what right have you to make whiskey that tastes that good? Yeah. Well, Alan, Ken Winchester. Ken Winch Alan Winchester is a different man. He lives in Scotland. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't this the Ken Winchester? Guy? Ken <laughs> Winchester is Ken. Oh, okay. Sorry, I hope you're not listening, Ken, but if you are, I know who you are. Nobody watches these videos. <laughs> yeah, though, and, right? uh, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've heard yeah. that, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we got a, quite the reputation to uphold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was talking to Don Livermore a couple weeks ago, and he said, you should go on, on uh, with Tranny and see. They have, they have dozens of viewers over the, oh, year, yeah. over the years. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> over, over, yeah, the, compiled over the years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. 
I was having a sniff on this thing, yeah, while you're... Oh, I've been sipping it. Isn't that <laughs> bacon? I bet you a buck this is... Uh, this is um, not spirit. That's the kind of bet I'm willing to take. Yeah. A it's buck. not... I can do I can buck. take that level no, of action. No, it's about as much as I can lose, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it has, like... For that... that uh, I mean, youthful. I mean, it's aged zero days, right? Like... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> has a big, like... Um, it's really fruity, fruity like, yeah. I don't know what that is, like plum or fig or something. Well, there's definitely plum. Yeah, that's nice though. It's it's just so different. It's nice to be able to have a reference point sometimes mm -hmm. at the beginning stages of how mm -hmm. where a whiskey can go. And I think they're actually aging that Williams White right now. Yeah. So they have some good whiskey, whiskey right now. Yeah. Well, and they won the best gin in the world mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, which is pretty yeah. crazy. And the other one won second. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of just like a preference, really. So I'm like, joking. I don't know. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> did, it, did it not? I don't know. You would think because they put out three gins or something like that that if the this the seaside gin won, why wouldn't the other ones come in? Oh, well, that really? Kazuki gin. What's that that Kazuki gin that they made. There's that one. The one that won was the seaside gin. I like the seaside. Yeah. I have yeah. a bottle at home right now. Yeah. I love the kazuki. It's just, I don't know, there's something about it. I feel like I like that one better too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. It's like less rose hippie. It's less. Like there's less rose but influence. It's more, to it. I don't know. Well, Jason's a chef. Yeah. Yeah. And my goodness, has that ever shown his spirits? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, last year at the Couch and Valley Whiskey Festival, they were there. Mm -hmm. And it turns out his wife, I work with her. <laughs> You do? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know. She never talks about it because she's in IT stuff. So we always, it's usually me calling me like, my computer mouse is broken or something. And she's, so we don't talk about whiskey or spirits. <laughs> and then she's standing behind the table like an expert pouring. So kind of cool. Small world. So um, what's next for the Canadian Whiskey Awards? Like going into next year, into the future, are there... Are there new ideas? Like you, you just expanded this past year in the categories. Anything else kind of like evolving for next year? Uh, I don't see see a lot changing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we need to kind of settle in with what we're doing now. This is our mm -hmm. tenth year. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had some special awards this year, like you know, whiskey of the decade oh, okay. for Confederation Oak. Yeah. Forty three, mm -hmm. and uh, we had distillery of the decade, Alberta distillers, okay, and things yeah. like that. Cool. Um, we're starting to get quite a few entries from the micro distillers, mm -hmm. from the small distillers. Mm -hmm, I'm sure, and uh, we might have to adjust to that. I all in the in the entry form it says, you know, this is not intended to take away entries from the. Canadian Arts and Spirits competition in the cask in, in Vancouver, which is oh, okay. uh, which really looks at all different kinds of spirits made by the, the smaller distillers. Right. So they have they do gin and um, uh, vodka and you know uh, whiskey, of course, and you know yeah. liqueurs, various spirits like that. But um, more and more um, whiskey makers are are putting sending uh, their uh, spirits into the awards. So like, hmm. we, I think I can see something veering that way, and I, you know, I, I want to be sure that we continue to encourage people to make to make good whiskey. Right. Um, a lot of people send it in just because they want to get feedback. You know. Fair enough. You know, they, so. they just want to get feedback. And, and, uh, yeah. And how much feedback do they get on scores? Do they really get to know how they scored, or uh, they know where they stand? Like ranking wise, ranking like oh, you wise. scored fifth in but, this but category we, but, or something. Well, no, we just we divide the this whiskeys into four categories: yeah, gold, silver, bronze, and other <laughs> honorable <laughs> participant. Do you have a participant uh, ribbon that yeah. goes? <laughs> what a good idea! You know what? <laughs> Feel free to part a participant ribbon on your bottle. Just to, those way, those of you who didn't get a medal. We'll, we'll be sending you a bar map. We'll be sending you a bar map. We'll be mailing you Trenian Sea coasters. <laughs> yeah. and those, you got yours. And those who really did badly, we'll send you two of those coasters. Yeah. Okay. We'll send you Trenian Sea. Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. You're wearing your I mean, I've put it on. Why not? Yeah, oh, my God. Okay, let's put our medals on. 
We all got gold this year. Yeah, I'm taking wow. these back. We're all, with we're I'm all winners. These back with me. These are <laughs> only props. if you remember. These are props for the yeah right. These are props for the show. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about the the event, like the award? Um, what do you call? Do you call ceremony? it a ceremony or is it a dinner? We like, call it a gala. Gala. Okay. You can call it a ceremony. You can okay. call it whatever you want. Sure. You know, so, okay. The uh, the gala is. Put on by the hotel Grand Pacific. Okay. They do all. I shouldn't say they do all the work. Heather Leary, who is the co-host of the awards. We met Heather. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, she works with James Burrow at the Hotel Grand Pacific. Okay. And they uh, put together that so we you know get the band in and they get uh, you know it was a beautiful buffet this year mm -hmm. and um, you know they take care of sound and the room and lighting and setting up the screens making it look like it's. Uh, more than a ballroom, mm. and, and they do a really good job, I think. Mm. And uh, and uh, people who want to attend that will call uh, the Hotel Grand Pacific and, and buy a ticket to the event. So that okay. the, the Hotel Grand Pacific handles that, and I'm not involved at all. Do you have to be a distiller, or <laughs> could like we call up and be like, hey, we want tickets this year? You could call up if yeah. you want. I I'm, I want to be because we, you know the room only holds so many people, right. and I want to be sure that. Everybody from industry who wants to be of there course. is able to get a seat. Mm -hmm. But we do get, you know, get uh, other people coming in, you know, just to to check it out. We, mm -hmm. do, get, we do get bloggers, and every second year we bring in uh, some journalists from the states mm. to try. And we've had some really big names oh, come cool. to the awards, you know. So uh, we know we had Lou Bryson and Dave Broom, and and well, Clay Risen was there this year, and. Uh, like, we've had a lot of people who really like, like um, I recognize Emily, Dave Broom from Emily the Wells internet and stuff, and people, of course, yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah, people who are, are really on the, the A-list, yeah. you know, coming. So we've been very lucky in that, and they're all they're all very kind and say nice things about yeah. us afterwards. Oh, that's so fantastic. It's, it's really, a, it's evolved into, you know, a, really a prestigious uh, competition because we've just been so careful Mm -hmm. To make sure that everything's on the up and up, and that you know that even no matter how much we love a certain whiskey, it only wins if ten people who don't know what it is but like the taste of it agree. That's makes so sense, a, right? Yeah. Um, like we've done, we've done a lot of blind tasting on our show, mm -hmm. where you know I set up his, mm -hmm. and he tastes them, and then he puts them in order of what he likes, and then he sets up mine for me. And we often find that the result is not what we thought it would be mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you think you like you know uh barrel proof whiskey but when you tried it next to some other one you actually picked you know something at 45 percent. you know and more power, whatever right so persuaded by a label and marketing and all those sorts yeah. of things it's kind of nice to just it's it's <laughs> i've always compared it in a weird way to it's like a form of meditation in a in a weird way because you get to focus on something so like singular in the moment. I love it. And, and whiskey yeah. meditation. Whiskey meditation. That's what. That's From hard. medication to meditation. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Do you yeah. have a cast strength the Alberta Premium here? Yeah, yeah. I, I can reach it. No, that's a whiskey that doesn't drink like a cast strength whiskey. No. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice a, one. It's really. Yeah. Do, uh, do you want to grab a couple more bottles? Yeah. We don't have to pour it. Just the, oh, yeah, yeah. we do. <laughs> I mean, this is trendy and see, okay? You know, this yeah, is what you, we do you, here. <laughs> In any case, that's a whiskey that, that uh, on, to me, uh, you know, it's so um, Get off of soft on the palate that, yes. you, that you really. So uh, be am I making you open a new bottle now? Look at that. You ever seen that before? No. No, that's, we opened it before. I don't know what happened. That little, that that little plastic could... piece that we could resell it. <laughs> yeah, it's still, go. it comes that way. There you go. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm going to taste the sharing ham again if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's all yours. Yeah, better. I'm gonna go in a little closer here. I'm not on the screen. Mr. Trini, there you go. Oh, cool, cool. I think the big excitement this year was seeing that Pike Creek 21 year old win. That was very because, cool. Because, yeah. you know, in the, those, you know, those whiskeys, the uh, Northern Border Collection have always been good. Mm -hmm. They're really, really kind of getting their feet under it. Sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of where people want to hit right now. But speak of, mm, you know, that's nice. Tasting nice, things um, differently blind. My favorite for that is uh, Crown Royal Northern Harvest Rye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you pour it blind, people don't know what they're drinking. You ask them for what? Where would you rate that on a scale of one to ten? They'll say, Well, I know. 
nine, nine point five. Yeah, yeah. Then you pour it out of a Crown Royal bottle, and where were you reading? Oh, it's pretty good. Eight point five. Right. So it's yeah, the yeah. same people. It's, yeah, it's the it's influence, marketing, right? Yeah. Like, marketing. Yeah, people. I, it, it just surprises me that people need to be told what to enjoy, mm-hmm. and that they will listen to to brand um, reps tell them why their whiskey is the best and subtly why others aren't as good. Right. And you know, it's, we, in Canada, the way you make whiskey, there's no bad whiskey coming out. There are so many quality control points right. in the whiskey making process. It's not like independent bottlers who often bottle stuff because they own it and need to get the money back. Right, mm-hmm. yeah, but, yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway. Um, well, Canadian whiskey, so, there's so much variety in it too. That compared to that's hardly even a category, right? Because it is, it can be any grain. It can be yeah, and, and you can add blend of grains. You know, like Canadian whiskey is everything, really, right? Well, yeah. you know, I read a story the other day within the, within the last week mm. in that's Forbes nice. magazine, I think. You know, and the woman who wrote it said Canadian whiskey rules are laxadaisical, so they can do so many things. And I hear that all the time now, and it just truly annoys me, because we can't, we don't have the same kind of flexibility that the American whiskey makers have, not even close. Hmm. They can do so many things that we can't do here in Canada. They don't have to age the whiskey, and they can still call it whiskey. Right. They can make whiskey out of the juice from a flax plant, not grain, Mm. and they can call it whiskey. They can Mm. put... 80% 80% of a bottle of blended whiskey in America can be neutral spirits, and it doesn't have to be grain neutral spirits. Mm. So this, this seems to be a new myth that, that, that is emerging. So yes, there's tremendous flexibility, or tremendous variation in flavors. But compare that with Scotch whiskey. The, 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 the gamut of Scotch whiskey is, is huge. Mm-hmm. So many different flavors like that. So, um, I, know it's, it's, um, I think maybe it's the 111 rule that makes people think that you can just play fast and loose with Canadian whiskey, and it's like it's a bit of a misinterpretation. But and then with like single malt Scotch, it being one grain yeah. malted garlic yeah. and all that. Well, right? there are many things. Yeah, but people don't know that the Americans are allowed to add flavoring. Their mm-hmm. only constraint is it may not be harmful. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In Canada, we can add we can add um, uh, mature spirits or wine mm-hmm. up to nine point or nine percent. But mm-hmm. far and away, most whiskey makers don't do that. Right. Yeah. One of the things they can add, they do sometimes add, add is like two-year-old rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. So it's not really whiskey yet in Canada; it is elsewhere, because that kind of is, they call it top dressing. Kind of makes the uh, it makes the the, the the whiskey kind of sing, you know, those high notes. But uh, and that actually speaks to that chapter in your book that explains why. Canadian whiskey was always referred to as rye because people wanted yeah. the one with the rye in it, right? Yeah. It was, you've read, yeah. you've read that I did page. read, yeah. I, I can <laughs> read. <You> read <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, I can read, yeah. See, you read a Well, Trenny read it to me. Yeah, it's his uh, just story listen, but, yeah. Down, but. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. There weren't enough pictures in <laughs> yeah. it for him. Did he, did he fall asleep? Oh, no, he slept no, like a baby. I stayed awake. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yes, we're, we're digressing from the Canadian Whiskey Awards, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Canadian Whiskey Awards, yeah. Um, but no, uh, I think we were talking, we got into kind of cast strength, right? That's what we were talking well, you about. Were ta- yeah. That's, that's why and we you're talking about people, people say they like cast strength and then they taste different whiskeys. And- yeah, our whole blind tastings. Like, yeah. I'm just saying that the legitimacy of your awards and the way that you do it, it's just, it. You know, to us, it rings true because of the fact that we do our own experiments, you know, and we've found those same those same results mm-hmm. yeah and, and surprising results you know you, you are know. surprised yeah. yeah 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 well that's pretty cool well and it's actually nice to show because like i have a different palette than c yeah and then the people that watch it they'll they know that they agree with mine more than his or vice versa mm-hmm. and and you do see these blind tastings that we do and people commenting and be like yeah you're you're bang on like hit my first is his last or whatever, yeah you know yeah and Doesn't sometimes and sometimes we're exactly the same too, <laughs> yeah. right? But like we've we've had more split decisions recently. But yeah. well, that just shows you how subjective it is. Mm-hmm. People who really are really into whiskey often don't agree. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's actually nice. A lot of the times, the ones that we end up agreeing on are the ones that aren't the like two hundred dollar bottle. They're the 
you know, yeah, eighty five dollar like, bottle or whatever the price. Yeah, is. like price and you know, <laughs> price and quality don't necessarily equate. And age too, you know, like yeah. there's a lot of different. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a misconception. I mean, like often age does, you know, does make something better. But we have, we've chosen Glen Farkless twelve over Glen Farkless forty in a blind, you know, in a blind challenge. So you know, to everything kind of like it hits a certain point and then it's that. it's peaked. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna turn the sound off my phone. Oh, sure. We never have to worry about that. No one ever calls us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're both here. Yeah. <laughs> um. Switching gears for a second here, you had you had a uh, a big event. Uh, you were with like Fred Minnick and some others uh, recently, right? Oh, Bookstock. Yeah, can you That's, talk about that a little bit? Oh boy, how was that? Bookstock was sensational. And that was in Kentucky, was it not? It was in Louisville. Okay. We yeah, we went down there at the Copper and Kings Distillery, which, by the way, is really a beautiful place. Mm. They have a great restaurant, a great bar. But they have a beautiful space downstairs, open space, where they set up a stage. And so there were, I think, f you know, 14 or 15 spirits and cocktail writers from across the United States. Okay. Plus me. Yeah. And we, uh, you know, they set up tables so we could sell our books. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the bookstore selling the books, but we're signing them. And um, then we did little debates and, uh, and, oh, and, and presentations, okay. oh, yeah. the authors, salons, they yeah. call it. <laughs> so we were together for two days. Got a really good crowd. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, yeah, it, I'm telling you. It was had you met fun. those guys before, or was this uh, like... most of them I had met before? Okay. Well, over the years, I've met most of the other people who are writing about mm. uh, whiskey and spirits. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron Goldfarb I hadn't met before, but he was there, and uh, I ha hadn't met um, oh uh, John McCarthy, but oh, he's uh, we were, got on really well, so but yeah, it, but it's really cool bringing people and people came from all over. That's awesome to attend. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, yeah. And it's, so uh, there was a, a a wide range of different topics that people wrote on, or was it like everybody? It was always about whiskey. Just so everybody no, had their own no, take no, on no. it, or no? No. Well, Copper and Kings is a brandy distillery. Oh, okay. In the capital of Bourbon. Yeah, that's interesting. Hmm. So Robert Simonson was there. His latest book is The Martini. Okay. It's a really good book. Of course, he's a great writer. A really good book. And then uh, you have Dave Wondrich there, you know, and he's had several of his books for sale there. You have Wayne Curtis. He's like he's best known for his Ron book, but he has others. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Amanda Schuster wrote the New York Cocktails book. Okay. That's another good book, which I really like. And she told me she wrote it. I'll read it. I'll read it to see some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, it's got great pictures. Oh, fantastic. It, it really does. Perfect. Perfect. So, um, so I, it really was something special to be down there. Yeah, that's there. awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. Is any of it, um, was any of it like uh, videoed or is there anywhere where people yeah. can watch that? And... They they videoed the, all the presentations, mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't heard that it's been posted anywhere. Oh, okay. And I'm sure they'll tell us if they post it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that was a couple of months ago now, wasn't it? Or was that in the yeah. summer? Uh, no, it was just a couple of months was ago. That, yeah. Oh, Fred and I, we, we kind of debated Canadian whiskey sure. versus American whiskey. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm That's telling good. you, what a gentleman yeah. he, he is. And he just like handed me one line after another. So he'd say something, set me up, and <laughs> I just bring it down like this. Perfect. And, you know, honestly, we had the crowd in stitches. It was it was quite. I mean, I thought like, you know, these. It's like I'm a comedian or something. And I, and I'm a, a whiskey comedian. And, yeah. I, and I'm a I'm a pretty boring guy. And, <laughs> We've noticed. Yeah. 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 Well, I copy you. Yeah. No, seriously. Learn okay. everything. From okay. That. Now, if I want my audience to go to sleep, what are we? Turn into training. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So Works you must have time. you must have uh, hopefully taken some shots at Fred for his ascot and things of that nature. Or no, he just stuck to the whiskey. Yeah, I knew Fred when he just wore sweatpants. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> the first time we I met Fred, he was wearing sweatpants. I thought, holy crow, did he just walk in off the street? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> then, he, then he started talking. So, uh, yeah, he's a he's an interest. He had his kids with him. Yeah. Oh, they are awesome. He's got the most beautiful children. 
honestly, they yeah. re really, they're they're going to be actors, and no, Fred's going to be saying, "Can I be in your movie?" Can I? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you were wearing your medals yeah. at the time as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's Jackie, good. his wife was there. She's she's uh, pretty cool too. She's very supportive of, of him. Yeah, that's great. Cool. I'm gonna pause for a second. I just want to make sure. I like to look. Okay. Oh, the film changed. He's nervous. Yeah. He's I always get nervous. It's like. Yeah, it looks like we're going as long as these microphones are working. Then we're bowling. <laughs> <laughs> we have had it before where we, you know, we filmed the whole night of, of of videos and then found out that the microphones weren't working or something like that. So yeah. we've been. You'll just have to fly long. back and redo well, can all you, of this. Is there a thing on the screen and someone can say test, test, or yeah, check, I tested it check. before, so yeah. that okay, mean right, anything. Okay, good. Okay, I'm with my dollar away since you guys are <laughs> 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 That's how we get paid here at Trinity and see. Yeah, that's most of our income. Is yeah. that right? <laughs> I got, so I doubled Making your bets. income. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Winning From bets. nothing to one. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> zero times zero double? doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. um, why don't you tell us a little bit about, I mean, a little bit about your writing process and, and your books. Your One you have out now and then you have one coming out sort of soon. You don't have to talk about it too much because I know it's a bit of a... But the process but, maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, we want to, uh, you know, launch it at the right time. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be old news by the time it comes out. But my first book, uh, book Canadian Whiskey, it's, it was really kind of cool because, you know, as with the Malt Maniacs, we were just interested in single malt scotch, not mm. even other single malt really? scotch, yeah. you know. And we were surprised, of course, when the Japanese whiskey was, came out and was so good, and then Indian whiskey. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, you know, prices were going up in Canada and driving back by all these distilleries. And I started putting binders together on each of the distilleries and the brands and something like that. And my daughter, Danielle, said, you know, Dad, you're writing a book. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's in And I thought, holy crap. So I kind of put that together and I, then I put a proposal together and sent it to an agent. And uh, about five days later, I had a book contract offered really? for me. Wow. And that took me two weeks to get down. I didn't realize you should, I should jump on that. But it took, yeah. me, it took me two weeks to get down to Toronto and uh, talk to the publisher. And, and you hadn't written a book before. That was your, your, was your no, first go at it. No, I hadn't. Yeah. I hadn't uh, cool. So anyway, so we reached the deal to write a book, uh, 65,000 words. And so I wrote all these chapters. I had it all laid out. And, was 115,000 words oh. Oh. and I sent it into the editor and he said uh, wow you know you certainly have delivered yeah that's great and he said you know uh, a book that's 115,000 words long is going to be really expensive oh, and you're not going to sell very many right so um, <laughs> maybe you could cut it back to 65 because we'd like to price it at $25 and that's Kind of the cutoff point. Right. Well, that's oh, huge motivation. Yeah. Because I mean, I had no idea, but you you know, when you had pages, you had price. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we, uh, so I did. I cut it back, and it just it really, you know, kind of did fairly well. So then I updated a lot of it because I mean that was in twenty twelve, May twenty twelve, it came out. So it was twenty ten when I wrote it, and uh, then so we updated it. And this one has been a huge uh, success. Yeah, the, the new Canadian whiskey, the second edition. Can they see that on the camera? Uh, yeah, they should yeah, be good. able to see okay. that. Yeah, can pull it in a bit. again now. Anyway, yeah. there it is. <laughs> and um, so that must be difficult though to get from, like you said, like uh, timely information. By the time that they they the book hits the shelf, how do you keep it? Like th every Relevant. year, there's a new there's new whiskey coming out, and yeah. like, <clears throat> well, you know, I hit the all the classics. Yeah. Uh, most whiskeys last for a few years anyway. Yeah. Um, so I, but I hit all the classics, but no, it doesn't change a lot uh, from year to year. Maybe it's changing a lot right now with all the new distilleries coming on. Right. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I toured up every distillery and that was fun too, because most of them had never seen a visitor before. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think I asked you this on our live stream, but did you get to a Stillhead Distillery in Duncan? Yes. You did? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the That's local. our, that's, yeah. you know, it just opened a couple, of, two years ago. I love those square barrels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. He's he's doing interesting things there for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of just quit his day job and went yeah. to school for whiskey and Is that right? started it really pretty quickly, you know, like. 
Yeah. Living they did the some kind of a blackberry infusion. Yeah, they do the blackberry vodka zanjins, I believe. Yeah. 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 I think that was going to be his best seller this year. Yeah, it definitely is. I see it in the store. Anyway, yeah. yeah I, uh, so, anyways, I, then I, you know, I got together. I used to do the Canadian editor for Whiskey Magazine. Mm-hmm. That things got more and more too much so I, my, I was working with Blair Phillips writing articles and so he took over as the editor for Canadian editor for Whiskey Magazine and which left me free to do other things and a lot less administration and mm. nonsense and stuff like that and um, about five years ago no it's more than that we decided we were going to uh, put together something about all the distilleries in Canada. Mm. We went and started traveling and visiting distilleries and things like that. And then, uh, I think it was two or three years ago, we finally put together a proposal. And at the time, there were about 130 distilleries in mm. Canada. So then we did a we did a timeline based on that. By the time we finished it, there were 250. Yeah, inch. wow, it's so, growing so, huge, eh? So yeah, the book got bigger and the deadline got Closer and closer and closer, <laughs> but why don't we talk about that when the book comes out? Sure, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, 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 I think that's probably that's that's a, that's a video. That's that's, that's, all, a video. that's all we that's got. A video, yeah. <laughs> we did a so, video, uh, but we gotta show this Pike Creek. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you can oh, yeah right. Pike Creek. Oh, there you go. This is Canadian Whiskey of the Year, Pike Creek 21 year old. Glorious. Finished oh. in Oloroso Sherry casks. There yes, we'll put the we'll put our gold medals on them, sure. There you um, go. honestly, this this whiskey is truly sensational and we better get a little I can't say it was oh, I can't can say it was you now pour a little bit. Yeah. Heather Leary, if you're watching this show, if you're the person who watches this show. Uh, this is this is your whiskey. Ed. If you're the person, <laughs> and we we you're the one person. Watching. We won't we won't pour very much. Yeah, just no. a pinch. And but you know what? Because I mean, you better not. Let this, me do it. This one's uh, this one's now sold out on on at least on the island here. Yeah. So I think you can get it in LCBO. Yeah. So there might if if there is any left, you should you should grab they one. They won't ship it anywhere. No. It's LCBO. They... Yeah. Exactly. It won't leave the province. Mm. Very nice. cool. Yeah, very nice stuff for sure. But even this is a cool one back here. The two brewers, well, man, oh two brewers goodness. peated. Yes. That's a peated one. I mean, there's so much cool stuff happening. Well, right it's now. really cool. Like they imported peated uh, barley from Scotland mm. to make this. Mm. You know? Cool. And then you have the uh, smoke point. You have smoke point. Yeah, the shelter point there. Yeah, they uh, they actually used Lafroy barrels. barrels. Yeah, and right. you know what? There's a distiller in BC who's peating their own barley. Pemberton, they dig the peat on their land. They've been doing it for about six years now, and they cool. and they peat their own barley. There's a That's guy, amazing, guy yeah. in New Brunswick does it as well. Yeah. But this one is made in Lafroy barrels to make it peaty, and this one is uh, they use barley that's imported from from Scotland. Yeah, well. So there's so much cool stuff happening with Canadian whiskey, right? I mean, it's it's, just... uh, it's truly wonderful. Mm-hmm. Oh, the nose on this alone is amazing. Mm-hmm. But it is wisery. Oh, <laughs> Quite wisery. Quite wisery. <laughs> that's our tasting notes. <laughs> is it? You know what I've been saying that this this year mm. you can really taste like the Hun Livermore's fingerprints. For sure. On the whiskeys that are coming out of the Highland Walker yeah. Distillery. Definitely. He's been, it's been kind of going that way, but he's really put his stamp on the house. For style. sure. Like people that like dissertation and things like that are going to love the products. Yeah, that come dissertation out. Is, is really a good whiskey. Oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. one of the best he's done. But uh, yeah. I mean, you used the correct word house style. Yeah. <laughs> Not wisery. Versus wisery, but. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, he's got a wiser house style. Yeah, he, 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 definitely. Yeah, wisery, wisery house. Much wiser. We actually got him to say it, so yeah, you know, so, it's yeah. catching on. It's it's official. Yeah, yeah, he's wiser than I am. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, yes. Thank you so much for coming and doing this video with us and spending some of your uh, your time with us. Uh, it's been fantastic. We'll have to we'll have to do it again the next time you have another book coming out, My whenever that might be. Pleasure. Okay, well, <laughs> sometime around March thirtieth, we should have a chat. Fantastic. I'll be away, but uh, maybe you can join us well, from we can abroad. Do the three yeah live stream thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah. we'll connect up. Yeah. Cool. Okay, cheers, these fellas. Okay, thanks cheers. again, and we will uh, thanks, see Heather. you every Thursday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
describing all the flavors for you and me. Irish scotch, bourbon and rye. If they like a bottle, they'll tell you why. Subscribe on YouTube.